Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is Hannah from the Instagram My Skincare Regime, where I post about skincare products I'm currently using. I also have a blog where I post in-depth skincare reviews, for which the link will be down below. As you all know, especially if you follow me on Instagram, I'm a big fan of the Misha Aqua Sun Gel, which is an SPF. My full review of it is on the blog if you'd like to read my review instead. But basically, I'm a big fan of this sunblock because it's one of the few sunblocks, especially K-beauty sunblocks, that have a matte finish and was suitable for oily skin. And I do believe that you can still purchase it, i.e. it's available on Stylevana. There could be other retailers where it's available. If I find any, I'll put them in the description bar. Basically what's happened is that this SPF has gotten more and more difficult to find online and that's because Misha actually updated their formula with this. This is the new Misha Aqua Sun Gel. It's an updated formula, totally different finish, and I've been hearing uh, quite a lot of negative buzz about this SPF. So the people that really enjoyed the old version don't really like the the new the new formula so i wanted to test this out for myself since i'm a big fan of the previous formula i wanted to know how the new formula fares with my skin i have oily combination skin i do prefer more of a matte finish when it comes to spfs i don't really mind a dewy finish as much matte is where my heart is but uh, i can definitely give dewy finishes a go i mean a good example of a spf that i like is from isntry the water sun gel so in this video we're going to be swatching and comparing the new and old misha formulas for the misha aqua sun gel spfs so we're going to be swatching them seeing how they are on the skin and hopefully you'll be able to decide which one you prefer and if there are any dupes, I will flag them up to let you know. Of note, both of these products are SPF 50 plus PA plus 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 plus. So that's the highest protection in Korean ratings. Of note, the old formula contains alcohol. It's quite important in SPF formulas to keep it extremely lightweight. And that's why in this new formula, there is no ethanol or denatured alcohol in the ingredients which does make for a slightly thicker formula than the original. I do know that the technology is improving and you're definitely getting more lightweight formulas without the use of alcohol, so it can be done and I'm enjoying seeing the improvement, but I must say it gives an edge. SPFs that have some ethanol in them tend to have no balling or pilling up. Now let's get on with the video. As you can see, the packaging is slightly different. I think the newer formula has more sleeker packaging with the blue line, but they both have the same cap. However, the new one sort of clicks when you close the cap, whereas the other one doesn't. But in terms of the volume, they're both 50ml, which is pretty standard for facial SPFs, although I do wish that that wasn't the case and they'd increase it, but hey. Both have the same SPF rating, but the prices differ slightly. The older version seems to be more expensive, perhaps because it's in lower supply or there's a higher demand for it. In terms of the key ingredients, these are quite different. For example, the old formula contains Morris Alba fruit extract and green tea, which are both soothing antioxidants, as well as Centaura cyanus flower water, which is conditioning. Queraria lobata extract is also included, which is moisturizing. Of note, the old formula contains BHT, which is an antioxidant. In terms of SPF filters, both versions contain homosalate, tinisorb S, and ethyl salicylate. The rest of the filters differ between them. For instance, the new formula contains tinisorb M, parcel SLX, and juvenile A+, whereas the old formula contains avobenzone and amyloxate. In terms of the fragrance and essential oils, what's changed is that the old formula had both fragrance and essential oils, which are listed on the screen now. 
whereas the updated formula only contains fragrance without the additional essential oils. Perhaps to help reduce the chance of any potential irritation for sensitised or allergic skins. So first up we're going to start with the old formula of the Misha Aqua Sun Gel. And here's some quick information on the product, but let's get into the texture, shall we? The biggest difference between these two products, the main difference, is the finish of them. In terms of the older formula, for someone with oily combination skin, the texture is ideal. It's lush and the lightest textured SPF formula I've tried so far. It just feels like water, like a second skin. No film forms on top. It doesn't feel heavy at all and just melts seamlessly into the skin. It doesn't sit on top or feel suffocating. It doesn't turn milky when you sweat either and doesn't ball up. It's perfect for hotter and humid weather and the summer months. And as you can see, in terms of the finish, it's not that glossy, dewy or shiny. It dries down into a matte finish. Just wiping off half the product, you can see the finish. The more it absorbs and dries down, the less glowy and glossy it becomes. And when applying this on the face, which you can see is on the left side, it's not dewy. It definitely has a matte finish. And next up is the reformulated version of the Misha Aqua Sun Gel. And here's some information, but let's get onto the textures. Right off the bat, this is just slightly closer to a cream than it is a liquid compared to the previous formula. Although, of course, it's still lightweight for a sunblock and still very nicely spreads along the skin. It's not sticky or tacky either. It's just slightly more moisturizing than the previous formula. And due to the lack of ethanol, it forms a slight layer on top of the skin rather than absolutely sinking into the skin like the previous formula did. But it's still a comfortable SPF to use. I must say when rubbing this onto the face, I am hit with fragrance. I also don't particularly like the scent itself, but it does dissipate once rubbed in. Due to the exclusion of alcohol and the inclusion of additional moisturising ingredients compared to the older formula, such as beta-glucan and three types of hyaluronic acid, this is a more hydrating formula. Furthermore, guazoline is included in the new formula, which is antimicrobial. The texture itself is also slightly thicker. It doesn't totally become one with the skin, unlike the older formula, and the finish of the new formula is very dewy and shiny. So if you like that look, then you may enjoy this glowier finish. And this is partly contributed by Tinisorb M, a sunscreen filter that is included in the new formula, which is partly a physical and chemical sunscreen filter, which means that it both absorbs and reflects light. And it is known that Tinisorb M provides a slight white cast to the skin, which I didn't notice, but what I do notice is the very shiny and dewy effect this gives the skin. Here's showing a little texture comparison. As you can see, both are lightweight creams that hold their own shape. I will say the newer version is slightly thicker and it is more yellow compared to the older version. As you can see when rubbing this in, these two both look lightweight, but it's the finish that differs greatly. And that's what I want to show you in this face swatch. The old formula is thinner in texture and I'm not hit with the scent of fragrance, but I do smell the alcohol more. The newer formula has a very dewy finish. As you can see, I look very glossy on the right side. It doesn't mattify, but I do get a hit of fragrance, which does disappear once I've rubbed the product in fully. I also wanted to add that in terms of layerability, can I reapply these SPFs without a problem? Yes, both can be layered and you can reapply them without them balling or pilling up. Also, I can wear makeup on top of both these SPFs. So overall, in terms of these SPFs, which one is best? 
It's kind of hard to say because they're both very different. So, for the old formula, that has more of a matte finish and it smells a lot more of alcohol. If you have oily and combination skin and you live in hot and humid weather where you're sweating all the time or you don't want to look like you're sweating a lot, then the old formula will be better for you. The biggest downside is that it's slightly more drying than the new formula, however, it has that matte finish. Whereas the new formula has a dewy finish and a more moisturizing finish, but it's not suited towards oily skins. And if you don't like a dewy finish in a sunblock, then the new formula is not for you. So I think that's where a lot of the complaints are coming from because the people who are complaining about this reformulation are people with oily skins who enjoyed the matte finish of the old formula. So the new formula, I don't think it's terrible. It definitely has more of the fragrance smell to it. It doesn't contain essential oils, whereas the old formula does contain essential oils. I wouldn't recommend the new formula for oily skins, but I would recommend the new formula for dry skins. I think dry skins are going to enjoy this a lot more. It still has that lightweight finish, so it's moisturizing and dewy. And also the new formula caters a bit more to those who have allergies, those sensitive to essential oils as well. So sensitive skins may prefer the newer formula because of that. Which one do I prefer personally? I do prefer the matte finish more. However, I don't mind the texture and the feel of the new formula. I'm not the biggest fan of the alcohol fragrance in the old formula, but I'm also not the biggest fan of fragrance in the new formula either. A dupe for this new version, the Isentree Watery Sun Gel. It also has a moisturizing finish and does have a dewy finish as well. The closest thing I can think of in terms of texture and finish is the Beauty of Joseon SPF. It's very lightweight and creamy and also has a dewy finish and is moisturizing. Another fragrance and essential oil-free moisturizing SPF with no white cast is the Etude House Director Pai Soon Jung Collaboration SPF. I'll leave a link in the description bar for it. In terms of a dupe for the old formula, it's very difficult to find a K-Beauty dupe with a matte finish. I've really tried to look. There is, I think, a J-Beauty dupe could be from Shiseido, the Anessa Sun Milk. I did a YouTube video swatching and reviewing that has a powdery finish. So I'll put the YouTube link in the description bar down below. But in terms of a Western dupe with a matte finish, I would actually recommend the Nivea Anti Shine SPF 50. That has a matte finish, so that will suit oily skins or those living in hot and humid weathers. But it does also contain, I believe it contains essential oils and fragrance as well. I also have a YouTube video swatching and reviewing that, along with other Nivea SPFs. If you'd like to see, I'll put the link in the description bar down below. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe today for future content. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.